we just like to welcome and thank everyone for joining us today at Rua International Ministries. I'm Pastor Sean Weisel, and we just are grateful that you are able to connect with us this day. We believe we have an inspired word from God for you. We believe it will be able to transform and renew your mind. And if you'd like to join us, you can even log in to www.ruainternationalministries.com. And we also have, you could subscribe with us on YouTube as well. But we believe the Word of God is transforming. We believe it's able to save you, to equip you for this time. Because today is the day of salvation. And we hope you're inspired. Because just as Proverbs 25, 25 says, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. God bless you and enjoy the message. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, let me, if I was to give a title for this message, it would be the God of expectation. Amen. And then we'll, we'll finish because we, we were talking about Job chapter 14. And we talked about in verse 7, For there is hope of a tree that if it be cut down, will it sprout again and uh, be brought up again. And the, the tender branch thereof will not cease, though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet the scent of water, it will bud, it will bring forth. And he says, and bring forth like a plant, so it, it'll, it'll, ri it'll rise again, you know? And so here he goes on and says in verse 10, but man dieth and wastes away. So he's talking about the hope of a tree more than a man. If he dies, he just goes away. And he says, yea, man giveth up his ghost. And where is he? Well, we know it says man, when a man in today's covenant, as it says in 2 Corinthians 4, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But if they don't know the Lord, yeah, there's another place they go. It ain't a good one, a hell, where they're talking about. But that, there's only the two places they go. There's no waiting period. And he said, as the waters, in verse 11, fall from the sea, talking about the cloud, and the flood decayeth and dryeth up, so man lieth down and rises not till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, and that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past, that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. Mm -hmm. You remember like Job? Mm -hmm. because, not Job, Jonah, you know, Noah. Mm -hmm. He was in the ark, but God had a set time, but God remembered him. And even though you're maybe in whatever is going on, God still remembers us. That was in the old covenant, and he wasn't in them. Today, he's in us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. So we don't have to just there, like, wait, like, when's God going to show up? He's in us. Amen? Amen. So he says here, that verse 14, if a man die... Shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change cometh. So he said, all the days of my appointed time. I'll read a different couple of translations. It says in uh, uh, NIV, of course, if someone dies, will they live again? He said, all the days of my hard service will I wait till my renewal come. You know, where you be renewed again. He says here in the NLT, can the dead live again? If so, this would give me hope through all the years of my struggle. And I would eagerly await the release of death. Uh, there's a, I'll read another one. This one I, can, I, I like here. It says, uh, he says, about his uh, warfare in the New English, Heart English Bible. It says, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my warfare 
would I wait until my release comes? Mm -hmm. And I'll read another one right here, the last. He says, if a man dieth, in the Young's literal translation, does he revive? Mm -hmm. He said, all the days of my warfare will I wait till my change comes. So he's asking, is, is there a time where we'll revive again? And God's in the reviving. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of what your problems may be, mm -hmm. he'll revive us again. Yes. You know, there's a point in time, but we wait on the Lord. We expect mm -hmm. a change coming. Mm -hmm. We're not calling things it is what it is. Mm -hmm. That isn't how it is with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You're not just, it, it is what it is. Whatever happens, happens, and that's it. No, we're in a better hands. We're in a God's hands who call things that be not as though they were. Amen. He's the one that can, where weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your change cometh. Amen. Yes. So here he tells us, I want you to see something. Even in the midst of problems, God's there. And he says right here in the book of Psalms, look at this, 45. Or maybe 40, hold on. Yeah, 40, 46, I'm sorry. Look at what this says. It says, verse 1, God is our refuge and strength. Was well, he tell us in Psalms 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, most, of, of the Almighty, and I will say, he is my refuge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He said, he's my refuge. So we have a, one that's present with us, mm -hmm. wherever, whatever we're in. Mm -hmm. And he said, what? He is my God. Our God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in trouble. Mm -hmm. So a person may be going in, they're in trouble now, but in our trouble, God's able to revive us. That's right. Amen. He's able to change us. Amen. Amen. In our trouble. Look at this. Go to Psalms 138. Because I'm just going to go right here. He says right here. Look at this. In verse 138, verse 6. I'll start actually in verse 3. It says, In the day when I cried, thou answered me and strengthened me with the strength in my soul. It says, All the kings of the earth shall praise thee, O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth. Yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord, though the Lord be high. Yet he has respect unto the lowly. Why is that? Because he lowered himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. he, it says, though lowly, he humbled. He rode upon a donkey when Jesus was here mm -hmm. in, in the earth. And it says what? But the proud he knoweth afar off. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says his eyes are over the righteous, but his ears are open unto our prayer. Mm -hmm. But it, what? He resists the proud. Amen. So in other words, when pride comes, he, he resists that because he's against pride, but he, he's unto the humble. Amen. Mm -hmm. So he said, verse seven, though I walk in the midst of trouble, he said he's a present help in the time of trouble. That's right. He said, thou will revive me. Mm -hmm. Thou will renew me. Thou will change me. Amen? Amen. Even in the midst of trouble, and you shall stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and at thy right hand, or the power, or Jesus, you shall save me. For thou will perfect or complete that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of your hands. He said, Though I walk in the midst, what did he say in Psalms 23? He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, your word 
and your Holy Spirit, what? They comfort me. Amen? And he said, what? You will, though I walk in the midst of trouble. It's not, he said, in this world, we'll have tribulation, we'll have trouble, but he's with us. And he said, be of good cheer. I've overcome it in John 16. But he said, you will revive me. So even in your problems, God's able to revive us. So he said, all the days of my warfare while I wait till my change cometh. Though you're in trouble, God's able to bring us out of it. Amen. He'll, he'll revive us in it. Amen. He'll renew us. What does he say in Psalms, what, 43? I believe it's 43. Not Isaiah 43, what? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up their wings as eagles. They shall run. That sounds like someone that's in problems, in trouble. He said what? He shall renew their strength. Revive them again. Amen. And then what? He says what? Renew that you will run and not grow weary. That's right. And you will walk and you won't grow tired because why? He's the one that gives power. Amen. Amen. Right. To us. And he says right here, and that you shall run and not faint. That's why we always talk about in Philippians chapter 4. He says what? As you have therefore opportunity, do good unto all men for what? It talks about even to those who are of the household of faith because he said as far as though you don't he says if you sow he talks about you don't need to grow weary because god will what he, to though he said don't grow faint because he talks about what god's gonna watch over what we do as far as and he'll recompense us amen so he says he'll perfect us or complete us Complete what concerneth us. Amen. So he said, all the days of my appointed life will I wait till my change cometh. You, you know, there's sometimes things in our life where we expected and then it looks like it, it hasn't happened and it's not going to happen. Or you even just lose hope of it even happening again. And, you know, we talked about last week, last Thursday about Joseph being in prison, but look at what God did to him. Mm -hmm. he, he, he took him up again and he put him, his dream wasn't dead. Mm -hmm. Well, even things that we expect from God or we're believing for God, or we just thought it was even there, God sees it, right. amen? Mm -hmm. And if we look at Joseph, not in that aspect as we looked last week, but we look at it a different way, you look at it, in Jacob, his father. When you look at Jacob, Jacob ended up thinking Joseph was dead. Mm -hmm. That's what he, they told him. He didn't know what happened under the conditions he was at. That's right. So years come around and it looked like a problem, but God can turn your mess mm -hmm. into a blessing. Amen. Mm -hmm. He could look at, he can turn what looks like something bad to turn it around for something good amen yeah i mean you you it may that's why we don't look we don't know everything we know in part we prophesy in part but we might just see what the circumstance but we got to look beyond the circumstance mm -hmm. and see jacob he didn't know mm -hmm. but see god had something already planned out for him amen he caused different there, there are different circumstances to arise to always bring someone to their destination, amen, if they don't give up, amen. Now, Jacob, in his case, there was other people who already knew, but he didn't know. And if we look at this, watch this, I want you to see something. Go to Genesis. Yeah, here it is, 45. I'm sorry, right at the top of it, at the end. It said, this was, a, I'm sorry, and Joseph, when Joseph, he ended up revealing himself who he was to his sons, and then when he did, he ended up, because he, he thought, man, he's going to take another son, his, his youngest son, which was Joseph's brother, Benjamin, and they put him in jail. And then he's thinking all of them are dead now, both of them, because he already figured he lost the other one. Well, he didn't know the whole situation. But even in what's going on, what seems like you lost something, God, Jesus said what? He came to seek and save what was lost in our lives. 
there's some things we thought maybe we missed out oh because you know we messed up or, or some conditions because of circumstances because we were we worth people and people can cause problems right I mean it could go on business it can go in family it could go wherever people usually problems always come with people if there's no people we probably want you the only problem you'll have is with yourself now I'm saying if the devil is still right there messing up but I'm just saying there there is most of the time it's people unless circumstances change but with this it was because of his own children and so what ended up happening that when Jacob, Joseph saw them, he revealed to whom he was, and then he brought back what? He sent all his brothers back with all the substance. Well, it says right here, verse 24, So he sent his brothers away, and they departed, and he said unto them, See that you fall not out by the way. And they went up into Egypt and came unto Canaan, and Jacob unto Jacob their father. And they told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. Yeah. See, when something looks like maybe a situation's in your life, because it even says old men dream dreams. Well, maybe their dream died. Mm -hmm. But see, here, God's able to revive it again. Mm -hmm. You know? And he said he is the governor over all the land of Egypt. Here he is oh, in the land, but see, he doesn't have what we have today. He, I'm surprised he didn't even hear rumors about because he didn't know who he was, but they knew there was a prince over Egypt. He didn't know it was his own son. But God could take a circumstance that seems wrong and why, why are we going through this, but he could turn into a blessing even for family. Amen? And so it says right here, and Jacob's heart fainted. So he lost, he, he lost heart and he believed them not. It's kind of like, you know, Thomas, where I have to see it to believe it if I touch him. You know, here Jacob is, because all these years went by, and it looked like, nah, this is impossible that he's still alive. And they told him all the words of Joseph, and which when he had said unto them, and when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, it said the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived and Israel he didn't call him Jacob no anymore he said and Israel said it is enough Joseph my son is yet alive I will go and see him before I died mm -hmm. so he said he revived his spirit after he saw what was confirmed about his son being alive so he didn't have to really see him he saw what was given to them to be confirmation that this thing that was so long ago past. Now, through what circumstances caused, he was able to go ahead and see his, be able to see his son again, but it caused his spirit to revive again. See, there might be some areas, he could have been bitter a long time. That's right. But see, God's able to rehatch things that may have seemed from a long time broken like you're never able to do it and God's able to restore it again where his spirit it said was revived again it was renewed again right. all those years he was with his family but see he thought some part of him was missing because he thought his son was dead but see God was able to go ahead and through the amount of circumstances because he has places he wants to take us and in those places when it happens he can revive our spirit again, where the things we might have thought we lost, God was able to restore back again. Amen? He said he'll restore what the canker worm, the locust, the palmer worm, amen, has took in. Look at this. Go to here, the book of 2 Kings. I want you to see something. Remember that woman we talked about whose son died? In the book of Second Kings. Yeah. Well, when we go to here, it says that that woman came back because there was a great famine in the land. And you remember she, uh, when her son died, Gehazi was ended up, um, Gehazi was up there with the king. 
And he was up there telling him the story to the king about how this woman died. And it says here in, in uh, chapter 8. Huh? No, I'm talking about in chapter 8. It says right here. It said, Then spoke Elijah unto the woman whose son had been restored to life. So he was revived again. And you remember that he went on top of the son and he laid on him and he seven times that child coughed again and it said he was revived. Mm -hmm. He was brought to life again. Mm -hmm. So here's, but we're talking about when things, when change comes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And it says this woman whose son was restored to life. See, sometimes God will do things in your life in the past and it's good to write things down to remember what he did because when you go through the book of remembrance, amen, the, God has a book of remembrance. We talked about in Malachi chapter 4 that he'll open the book of remembrance, amen, that all those who thought on his name and then, you know, that thought on him and talked about him. And right here, it said that they were talking. Elijah said to him, Arise and go, and go thou and thy household and sojourn wherever, wheresoever thou canst sojourn. For the Lord has called for a famine. See, God will let you know what's going on before things happen. Right. Amen? Mm -hmm. He knows how to deliver you out of situations or to tell you where to go before bad things happen. Mm -hmm. He caused a prophet to come, but we're not always led by prophets. God will use prophets, but we're to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because he's in us. Mm -hmm. He has a voice in their sheep. Well, no, a prophet will confirm what the Lord may be already speaking to you. Mm -hmm. But in the Old Testament, not everyone heard from the Lord. So God used prophets to speak the word to the people mm -hmm. to let them know mm -hmm. what to do. So here's this woman. And God used Elijah to tell her, look, a famine's coming. He even said in the book of Acts that Augusta, Agabus, he said there will be a great drought throughout the whole earth. You know, at, at one time in the book of Acts, and it God, it was confirmed that at that time there was a whole a drought came throughout the whole earth. And he says right here, and it shall come upon the land seven years. That was just like the same of Joseph. See, he, he showed a dream to the king, and Joseph interpreted the dream seven years of what? Prosperity, and then seven years of famine. He's telling her, go somewhere, wherever you go is. But there's a famine coming. And he says right here, the woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God. And she went with who? Her household. And sojourned in where? The land of the Philistines. Seven years. So she went into a land where there was the enemy. But he, she got out of the land. But we know that the Lord's with her. And look at how God remembers things. Seven years is kind of long after it goes by, but see, he's got an expectation you can hold on to him because mm -hmm. seven years go, goes by. If the Lord gave you a word, this is going to happen. He isn't going to leave you in the same condition that you're in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He didn't leave Noah in the boat mm -hmm. and was like getting the boat and then didn't just left him there and said, but let him try to figure out what to do afterwards. Mm -hmm. Nah, if God tells you to leave a situation, He's going to make a way for another place. Amen. Or if he has you to come back. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, he did it with Jesus. He told them to leave because King Herod, where they were killing the th children. Mm -hmm. And where did he go? He went off into Egypt because he gave Joseph the father a dream and told him to leave. And then he went over to Nazareth to Nazareth that's where he was called he'll be born of a Nazarene but then what he came back after years passed mm -hmm. but what the 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 things that were adversity to him the things that could have got you know killed him mm -hmm. God knows how to deliver his people out of trouble mm -hmm. amen? amen or from trouble amen mm -hmm. He knows how to get us away from it. He knows how to bring us out of it. And he knows how to walk through it. Amen. Yeah. 
so it says in verse 3, it came to pass at the end of what? Seven years. We know seven means rest. We know seven means complete. It's a completion, just like the child sneezed seven times. Amen. Just like Joseph, there was seven years of famine, seven years of first of prosperity, and seven years of famine. That's a completion, a cycle. Amen. So it says, it came to pass at the end of seven years. So she must have been holding on to that word. It might have been quiet at that time. Like, man, what's going on? But I know he told me to leave, so I'm going to hold it out for seven years. And what happened? That the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. And she went forth to what? Cry unto the king and her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehazi, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah has done. And it came to pass, as he was telling the king how he had restored the dead body to life, Look at this. It's not by coincidence. And I've had it happen where they're talking and then we call and they'll be like, man, we're just talking about the same situation. And then you call, you know, what's going on. Or you walk into a situation where they were just talking about it. I remember uh, when at, at one time at the work, God gave me a word for someone. And then... Uh, I walked over because I, I know he smoke, spoke to me the night before about it, and now it was. And then they just weren't there the next day, and then it came the next day, and I saw how it would be when I would give it. So I walked up to them, and I told her what the Lord spoke, and they were like, "We were just talking about that, the exact same thing," and the Lord was just confirming to them what word was going forth to be able to and they were like you know mm -hmm. i was like okay lord you know he, he knows what how to give a word in due season and so he said right here he said tell me or it said verse five that that whose what son he had restored to life cried to the king and up for her house and for her land and god said my lord O king this is the woman and this is her son whom Elijah restored to life. And the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer. So he said, all the days of my life will I wait for my appointed time till my ch change cometh. What? Restore all that was hers. See, God doesn't leave you empty handed. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Restore all that was hers. It might seem like years went by, but where is it, Lord? Where's the promise? God, God's, all his promises are yes and amen. That's why we got to know he's the God of expectation. We don't have to lose hope. Amen? Mm -hmm. And he says right here, restore all that was hers and all the fruits of her field since when? The day that she left the land even to now. So all that it looked like was missing for seven years, God gave it back to her in one day. That's right, amen. He can change whatever your situation looks like mm -hmm. to bring it all back in one day. That's right. He did it with Joseph. It looked like years went by, but then here comes his family with all the kids and his father and restored their relationship, amen? amen. Restored everything back and even more on top of that because he put them in a position. Some people wait, but and sometimes you got to wait. Look at Job. We, we could look at his life because he's the one said, all the days of my warfare while I wait till my change cometh. But if we look at the last chapter of Job, look at what it says here. In Job, uh, the last chapter 42, I believe. It says right here, After Job, you know, the Lord showed up. He told him, gird up his loins like a man. And then he said, what's it called? You know, st the Lord starts speaking to him, saying, who is he that hides counsel without knowledge, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and then, you know, he, he said, uh, 
the, the Job spoke to him. And then he said, I uttered that I understood not things which are too wonderful for me. So he, he only knew in part. He didn't know what was going on, everything. And then the Lord just said, you know, here I beseech thee and I will speak. In, in other words, as far as Job was saying, here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand thee, declare thou unto me. I've heard of thee by the hearing of my ear. But now my eye seeth it. And he said he had repented in dust and ashes. And then what did the Lord say? He said to him, before God restored everything, what did Job have to do? It says right here, verse 7, It was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said to Eliphaz the Timonite, My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. You have not spoken of me the thing which is right, as my servant Job has. Therefore take unto you now seven bullocks. He's talking to his friends. One, he said two of them. And he said, what's it called? And go to my servant Job and offer up for yourselves burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you. Mm. Least for, I will, for him will I accept. Look at that. He said, I'll accept his prayers, but you need to repent. So I, he, he will, what's it called, be accepted for the prayers that he prays for him. Least I'll deal with you after your folly in that you have not spoken the thing which is right like my servant Job. And then what? So Eliphaz and the Timonite and Bildad the Shudite and Zophar the Namathite went and did according to all that the Lord commanded him. And the Lord also accepted Job because Job repented. Right? Mm -hmm. And then his friends came up and needed to repent to him, you know, to get everything restored back to right, because not all of them knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. Now we have a little more revelation than what they knew back then. And look at what happened. Verse 10 And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. See? Sometimes instead of talking about people, you pray for them. Amen? Yeah, that, that's what God wants us to do. Amen? Yeah. Jesus, if he had anything to talk about, he could talk about us. But Jesus told Peter, I prayed for you. That's Amen? Right. And he said he sits on the right hand and still intercedes on our behalf. Amen? Because he, he sees us as world changers. Amen? Amen. But we got, he sees us as changed first. Amen? So he says right here, and the Lord, Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Amen. He turned his whole situation around. What did he do? If you could see that he restored his friend's relationship. He restored what? Then came verse 11. Then came unto him all his brothers, all his sisters. And all that had been of his acquaintance before, and did eat bread with all his house. He restored his family's relationship. Mm -hmm. So he restored his friends. He restored his family. And what? And they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. And every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one a gold, a earring of gold. He restored his finances back to him. Amen. More. Watch this. So the Lord blessed the latter end. That's why we don't give up. He said the latter end. He said he'll cause the early, the early rain and the latter rain. Amen? Amen. There's a beginning. He's the alpha, the beginning and the ending. Amen? Amen. It says he that begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of his return. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So he said, and the Lord... It says the end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep. He restored all his substance back to him, double. And it said he gave him also seven sons and three daughters. And he also caused him to live, what? Up to 140 years. So he was able to see his son. He restored unto him age to outlive. He restored his family, his friends, his finances, his, his substance, amen, his health. Mm -hmm. He restored it all. That's a good God because mm -hmm. man can't do that for you. Yeah. 
they could barely restore whatever. Maybe restore your car for you to redo it again. But I'm talking about restoring everything back. That, that's the Lord that it takes. Amen? Praise God. So we'll look, but he, he's talking about God's in to changing things. Amen? I, I want you to see sometimes, too, instead of our looking at our situation... I want you to see something. Because I'm going to just throw this in here. In Ezekiel, it says verse 37. Yeah. It talks about how Ezekiel was in the valley, amen, of dry bones. And see, instead of just talking about how bad the situation is, the change will come. But we need, to some, we need to speak in our situation, amen? amen? And prophesy. It ain't prophet lie, it's prophesy, amen? Because we have a God that watches over his word to perform it. And it says, The hand of the Lord was upon him and carried him out in the spirit of the Lord and set him down in the midst of a valley which was full of bones. His, his situation may have looked dried, amen? amen. It looks like it's dry. There's, there's no hope in this. But see, God's a God of all hope. That's what it says in Romans. I believe it's Romans 16. He's the God of all hope. Amen. He, he's a God of expectation where we can look to him because he'll cause this situation in our life to change. Amen. He'll revive whatever is going on that looks like, man, it, it, it might not be hope in there. What did it say in Romans 4? Abraham, who was without hope, believed in hope. He believed in expectation. Why? Because God's the one that spoke unto him and said he'll make him a seed of many nations. Amen. Give him a seed of many, will be of many nations because he called things that be not that though they were. And he said, though he didn't even consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. And in other words, it looked like it could have been no hope with her. But he didn't even look at himself because he was fully persuaded, amen, of what God had promised. He was able to perform because he wasn't wavering in God. But he was strong in faith, giving glory unto God, as the word says, amen. So you got to look at it even in the midst of something that looks like, man, this is almost, how is this even going to change? It could be right now things going on like problems in the earth or in our nation, but it doesn't mean we're without hope because we serve a God that's better than our circumstances. Amen. Amen. And, and so he says right here, he looked down and it was full of bones in verse 2, and he caused me to pass by them round about. He caused them to look at what was going on. Just because you look at it, doesn't mean you have to accept it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because he's able to revive bones. He's able to revive the situation. And you know, I, I was just uh, talking, and then um, it w w me and another person was talking, and then uh, and I, and I, I mentioned to them, I was like, you know, if God calls you to a place you know, he, he's going to be there to provide, but he'll cause the things you need to be there where, where he's placed you, where he called you. If you're in God's calling, he'll bring what you need. That's right. Sometimes you have to speak it into existence, and he'll bring it to you because you're in the place that God called you to be. Amen? Amen. You're not out of his will. You're in the will of God. Amen. And when you're in the will of God, though the situation might not look all that you can speak to that situation and things will change things will revive things will turn around amen so he said right here he said unto him son of man can these bones live and he answered he didn't say no he said lord god you know us again he said unto me prophesy unto these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones hear the word of the lord 
Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live, and I will lay sinews on you, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skins, and put breath in you, and cause you to live, and you shall know that I am Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. See, it says the testimony of the Lord is the spirit of prophecy and revelation, but he tells us to speak. In a, speak unto your mountain. Don't talk about it. Speak unto it. Amen. If you want to th see things change, speak to it. If you want to see a difference, speak to it. Amen. Amen. Don't just talk about it, what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Speak to it and you'll see things change Amen. and you'll see things revive. You will even see revival. Amen. Amen. He'll cause the bones to revive again. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He'll cause people to revive again. Amen. Amen. Not only your life, their life. Yes. Praise God. And so he said he prophesied as he was commanded. And as he prophesied, what was there? A noise. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You'll get a confirmation. Just speak it. You'll get what? First a noise, he said. And then there was a shaking. And what? The bones came together, bone to his bone. See, God will bring people that will be part of what you're doing in your situation. Amen? He calls the bones to come together. Praise God. He'll cause the people that are supposed to be in their life to come together. Amen? He did it for Job. He brought his family back together. He restored his friends back together. And he restored his health and his substance and his wife with all his children. Gave him more children than what he had before. Amen? He's able to bring bone to the bone together. Praise God. And then he said... And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skins covered them above, and there was no breath unto them. So it doesn't mean you just stop there. Just because you see your situation coming together, it doesn't mean you stop speaking about it. Amen? Amen. And he said unto them, prophesy unto the wind. Because uh, he might have you speak more unto the situation. Amen? You don't have to stop there. You know, you might be looking for a house, but now you got to believe for it furnished. Amen. Mm -hmm. You might be looking for people to restore relationships. Amen. But you can believe it for be better than the former will be. The latter will be better than the former. Amen. Amen. He'll cause the latter to be greater than what the former was. The relationship in the past was broken, but God will restore it and bring it, make it better than what it was before. Amen. Amen. And he says right here. He said, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, and breathe, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And so he said he prophesied unto them, and they, the breath came into them, and they live and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Amen. Amen. Another a great army arose out of Amen. it. Praise God. Amen. He'll cause things great to arise in your situation, amen, because you begin speaking to it, praise God. You don't give up, amen. It's so, it, it, you, if you look at the situation, it can kind of bring a person where they can be downcast, but you, all you got to do is speak to it. It's not a hard, it's not really a hard thing. Even though you may not feel like it, that doesn't, re, it doesn't mean you shouldn't speak to it. Because feelings don't override w what you say. Amen? Amen? You can override your feelings on what you say. Right. Praise God. You don't have to be controlled by your feelings. You can be controlled by faith, by Amen. speaking the word, uh, 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 contrary to what the situation looks like. Amen. Praise God. And you can see God do great things into there. And if you did say some things wrong, you repent. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, but I'm going to start speaking to this situation now. Amen? Amen. Say, you know, you just tell them, Lord, forgive me for doubting. Uh, it's time for me to arise and speak. Amen. And the last one I'm going to say is this. Where all the days of his appointed time will he wait till his change cometh. I want you to see something. Look at this. It says here in Job. Chapter 19. Get over here. 
or it says verse 20, 23. It says, oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Well, they are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. That they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. Well, they are because his word settled in heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. He said, for I know that my redeemer liveth. And he says, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. He was prophesying. Mm -hmm. He was knowing that the Lord's going. He's talking about when he said, my Redeemer, that means the Messiah is coming. And he says, what? Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Amen. Amen. So there's a day coming where the Lord will come and return. Amen. Amen. There's an appointed time. Amen. He appointed in Acts 17, appointed every man to repent. That's right commanded everyone because he appointed a day mm -hmm. in which where the Lord will return. Amen? Amen. And he says right here, he said, and my eyes shall see him. He said, behold, he said, for my flesh shall see God whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall not be old and not another. And so he's talking about seeing ahead of times those we have hope in this body mm -hmm. that though the Lord don't, as far as though the Lord allow us to stay mm -hmm. for that time, there's going to be a point in time in which he will return. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we will see him. Mm -hmm. Look at this. Go here in the book of 2 Corinthians. I want you to see this. Chapter 3. It says in 2 Corinthians 3, he's talking about when we turn to the Lord, he'll remove the veil from off our hearts. Amen. In other words, the Lord will be unveiled to us, be revelation to us. Amen. He was talking about the Jews. If they turn, then God will remove the veil from their hearts. Amen. And he says right here, verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall be turned to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with an open face, amen, an unveiled face, beholding as in a glass a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed. That word changed there is the same word in Romans 12 too meaning that we are talking about being no longer conformed to the world, but be transformed. Amen. That means the same word, metamorphy, mm -hmm. where it means we are changed, right? Mm -hmm. It talks about like a, a, it's taught like a cocoon, where it's a metamorphosis that's going on. Mm -hmm. It says, though the outward man perish, the inward man's renewed day by day. Amen. Right. We're being renewed, revived day by day. Because our, our expectations, we're going to be changed. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. It says right here, we're a changed where? Into what? The same image. Why? Because Christ lives in us, the hope of glory. The same image from glory to glory. Right. So we're being changed from glory to glory. When he was on the mount of transfiguration, that was, a, that was the metamorphosis. They were getting a glimpse of how things will change in their life. That one state you're in, you're going to be changed into a different state. Maybe you're in a temporal state naturally, but we're really in a spiritual state where we'll be changed for eternity. Amen? And God will cause the natural state to turn into a supernatural state. Amen? Our immortal state, from mortal to immorality. And he says what? Even by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. What did it say in 1 John chapter 3? Though they don't know us how we are, but as we He is, so we shall be changed. Even what? He will be just as He is that He talks about. Though, though they don't know what we are, but we know who we are because we're the sons of God or we're sons of glory, we'll be changed even into His image. And it says in chapter 4, as he is, so are we in this earth. 
but there's going to be a time where they'll physically see the change. Amen? Look at this. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 15. In verse 51, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall, we shall not all die. But what? We shall all be changed. And how quick is that? In a moment. Amen? Amen. In what? The twinkling of an eye. So as a blink of the eye, we're going to be changed. And what? At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall change for this corruptible must put on incorruptible and this mortal must put on immortality. So it has to. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Because he lives in us and the glory is going to be manifested through us. Amen. Right. This yeah. earthly suit will be taken off and this new suit will be put on. Yeah. Just like Jesus, when he was ra raised from the dead, what happened? He was in another form. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. It said in Mark 16, he was in another form when he appeared to him. So shall we be also changed in the twinkling of eye. That gives us expectation. He won't even change our circumstances. He's going to change us. Yeah. Praise God. He will have, though we have it now in the spirit, new garments. Amen. Amen. Just like I didn't even get a chance to go there. But if you read Zechariah chapter 3, it talks about how Joshua who, who was the foundation, Satan was standing at his right side because he was being the accuser of the brother and where he had uh, defiled clothes on, clothes that were full of sin. What happened? The angel said he rebuked him. He said, the Lord rebuke you to Satan. And then he gave him new garments. Amen. Amen. A new garment that he was changed. This was one that was plucked out of the fire. Amen. Amen. And you may be in the fire, but God's plucking you out. If you're willing to just give your life to the Lord, he'll change some things in your life. He'll put on new skins in your life. And then you'll get a new body for eternal life. Amen. And it says here in Philippians chapter four, three, it says, look at this. For we look, watch this, in 3, verse 20, for our conversation, our talk, right, Amen. is in heaven. Amen. We're not conversating about temporal things. It says our conversation is in heaven, in verse 20, amen, our citizenship, amen, amen. I'm not, I don't need, though you get, God will provide you with a citizenship here on earth if you need one. You need a new United States citizenship? That what's too hard for God? He could go through the channels and get you one. Amen? But it says our real citizenship is in heaven. Amen? It's through Jesus. That's the only way you get in there. There ain't no other way. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, you ain't getting there through Muhammad. You ain't getting there through Moon. You ain't getting there through the Harry Krishna and all these other name people who got, you know, who have the other books and other things who say, yeah, there's more than one way. No, -uh, there's only one way. Praise God. And that's through Jesus, the name of given among all men, where that by they must be saved. And he said, our conversation is in heaven from where we also look to the Lord. What? Our, for the Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall do what? Verse 21, who shall change our vile body. He said our vile body, amen, which is in another words, in another words, as far as this body that's gone decay, amen. He said he'll change our vile body to what? The body of humiliation, Amen. Amen. The, this low state, this immortal, this mortal body, this state of shame, this body that will decay. He said he'll change that body and make it what? A fashion like unto his glorious body. Amen. 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 That's how our body's going to change. You don't have to look at your, you got to look in the mirror and say, man, I got a glorious body. Amen. I'm not looking on the outward. I'm looking at the inward because God lives in me. Amen. 
greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Amen. Don't speak down on yourself. You got to look at yourself and call things that be not as though they were because they really are in you. Amen. You have Christ the hope of glory in you. You belong to God. You're bought with the price. Don't belittle yourself. Don't let no one bring you down. Amen. Speak to yourself that, man, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I don't care what situation I am. God's greater than this situation because I have the greater one in me. Amen. I can walk through whatever situation I'm faced with because what? I shall run and I, I will not grow weary. I shall walk and I won't faint. Amen. Because I have victory in whatever situation I'm put in. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm an overcomer. I'm an achiever. I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm above only. I'm not beneath. Amen. He's caused whatever my hands have touched to prosper. God opens doors before me. The enemy can't close. Amen. He, his favor goes before me because it's Christ that lives in me, the hope of glory. Amen. I'm not, I'm not conditioned to my circumstances. I walk above my circumstances. As he said, upon the high places of the earth. Amen. With my invincible army, which is God who's for me and not against me. Amen. Amen. So he says right here, man, I said it's the spirit of God. So he says right here, he, he shall even fashion it according to his glorious body and according to the working wherewith he is able to subdue all things back to himself. He's going to cause all things to come back to himself because that's where we belong with him. Amen. Amen. He's with us now, mm -hmm. but we're spiritually, we're going to be with him eternally. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. We may be in a physical body, but don't look upon the physical. Mm -hmm. Look into the spiritual because we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, all his promises are yes and amen. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'll, I'll richly give you all things freely to enjoy. Amen? Right. amen? He didn't cause us to be... Uh, 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 to be defeated. Mm -hmm. He calls us to be a conqueror. Amen. Right. He didn't have the world to change us. He changed us and conformed us into his image That's so right. we can change the world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they told us in school, they, they called us that they told us we're world changers. Amen. Yeah. We're not here just to change our little circumstance. We're here to change the world. Amen. Because yeah. there's more there with us then these are in the world. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Give Amen. God glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And so we speak today, Lord, if, there, if there's anyone here who needs a change in their situation, you know you haven't been speaking right. We, we repent right now in the name of Jesus. And you want to see things change for the better. Well, first it starts with receiving Jesus. It ain't a positive thinking thing. Just because you could think positive without the Lord doesn't mean things are going to change great for your life. But if you make Christ Lord of your life, He's going to change every situation in your life. And He'll start with you, changing you from the inside out. Amen? So all you got to do is call on the Lord and ask Him to come in your life, and He'll change what your situation is. But right now, we're going to call on Him. And if you said things that were wrong, you're not defeated. You're blessed. Amen. You're more than a conqueror. And he wants to change what you're going through to something better. Amen. He wants to restore things in your life. So we're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of how I've talked. I repent of my doubt and things that I looked at in my situation. And Lord, I thank you right now that we speak to our situation. And we cause it to change in the name of Jesus. We tell our situation in Jesus' name right now. In the name of Jesus, we speak life into that situation. You might have things going on in your body. Don't speak about what the doctor said, what's bad. Jesus is your healer. He wants to give you life and health in all things in your life. He's the health of your continents. He's the son of righteousness that comes with healing in your wings. If you need it, he just speak it in Jesus' name and the Lord will change it in your life. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke cancer out of that body in the name of Jesus. We rebuke infections in that body in Jesus' mighty name. We rebuke 
in Jesus' name, that spirit of infirmity that's been going on in your body, and we command it to be healed in Jesus' mighty name. We command those relationships that were broken in families, in friends that were of God and ordained of God that were messed up. We speak life and ask the, you to restore it in Jesus' mighty name. We speak restoration in those relationships right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you that you'll cause the latter and to be greater than the former. And we thank you now, Father. We give you glory for doing it in our life. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Some of you need a car. Speak to it. That, that's what you're in your situation right now. Nothing's too hard for God. Amen. He'll, he'll cause things to change. Maybe you, you're in need. You're in desperate need of a car and you don't have something right now. But, you know, God's better than that. He'll cause someone to give unto you. Amen. He'll, what's hard with a car? Hagar needed a well for her child. You might need a car to drive your kids around. You don't want them being on, getting transported by the bus and cabs all the time, but God has a better provider and provision for you. She needed a well, and God opened her eyes, and what? In the middle of her wilderness, God provided a well for them to drink water out of. Amen? He provided a donkey for Jesus so he could ride. Amen? He provided a room for them to go in the upper room to go ahead and be able to have their supper together. Amen? God knows how to do things in your life. You might be in need of for what? A house. Maybe your conditions you're living in aren't right. You might be living in the wrong conditions right now. God provided a house for us. I was, we were homeless before, but you know what? I said this light affliction is nothing compared to what God's glory is going to be able to do for our life. And know what? In the point in time, he gave us it. Amen. He brought the house and my feet stood in it. And I said, if this lady don't want this house, I'll take it. Know what? She walked in. She said, no, -uh, I don't want this house. And know what? The Lord gave it to us. Amen. And made a way for us. Praise God. He's able to do it. What's a house to him? He gave them to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy and Numbers 14. He said, I'll give you houses you didn't even have to build. All furnished to them. Amen. Because God said, nevertheless, he's not looking for the less in your life. He's the one that wants to give you best for your life. So we speak change this day in your life. But it first starts with you. Amen. He let him be the God of glory that will change your life. Amen. From the dead who quicken the dead and call things that be not as though they were. Amen. To speak life in your situation. We love you and God bless you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God.